So guys, let's have a look now using Affinity Publisher at how to create a photo album or photography portfolio template of 40 pages in Affinity Publisher. This is an Affinity Publisher desktop tutorial which is also suitable for Affinity Photo. Now photo albums are fantastically versatile and very popular. In this set I'll show you how to create one in A4, which is European size if you like, and one in US letter. So that's the US and all its territories where it's normally used. Commonly referred to as letter size, or ANSI A. What I will do though to make life easier for you is produce a zip file set of Affinity Publisher pages. And I will then provide for free in the download folder of my website. The full 40 page template of both the A4 and the letter sizes. So it'll be all there if you want to just get straight to it. But I would advise you to work through this so you know what's happening in the file. Then you have the best of both worlds. You'll know how to create and modify and add pages, delete them even, to your album and also have a working version to start with. Very nifty. Now, this is the main template. Just drop in your own pictures and texts and it's ready for print. Or use it as a professional online PDF or email attachment. This portfolio can serve multiple purposes. Use it to present your photos, products, services or anything else you can think of where images would be front and centre. Everything you see is editable right in Affinity Publisher. All colours can easily be changed in one location. All texts are set with free fonts and download links are provided. Now the A4 document. Let's get started. Open Affinity Publisher. Create a new document with the following measurements. Now this is the A4 version. So I've started with the plain A4 document in the print options. The, the, the the pre-made print ones, but because I'll change it slightly, um, it will end up in my presets and I've renamed it Photo Album Portfolio Template A4. You can see it in the bottom right hand panel there. Now you can see the sizes, it's standard A4, it's in millimetres, prefer embedded. Um, em embedded images are by far the best. If you have them linked, you can lose them really easily, never find them again and you have to start messing around with your document to try and find images to replace it. Linked images are a pain. Now the number of pages that we're going to create are 20. What's this you say? 20? Well it's a 40 page document. Well there's 20 double pages which gives you 40 pages. They're facing pages set out horizontally and we're starting on the right. CMYK colour format now margins are set there as shown, 15 on the outer and inner and 40 millimetres on the top, 27 millimetres on the bottom. This is fairly standard sort of layout for a photography book. You don't want your margins way out near the edges. The bleed of course is a standard 5 millimetres. Now this is pretty much the same for the next one which is the US letter document although obviously the measurements are slightly different. And you can see I've put a My Preset down there so I can come back to this document really anytime I like from the new document presets rather than even call up the template. It depends what you want to do. Now as you can see there the measurements are slightly different but the colours the same. The margins are in inches. Everything's in inches rather than millimetres. That's the US and the UK if you like or Europe. Europe's millimetres, the US is inches. Not too difficult to work out. Now the master page. So with Affinity Publisher we'll need to modify the master A page first. And it looks like there's a lot of work there but it'll save you hours later on. In this example you can see both a page on the right and a page on the left with the spine centre line down the middle. Don't go larger than 40 pages you'll run into spine creation issues if you do because the thickness of the paper will slowly make your little folded book thicker and thicker and thicker. Now if you're going to print this out you don't want to be messing around with spines and all that yet. 
If you're doing a photography book, fine, and you want a hardcover, put a spine on it. This is not. This is a portfolio. It's meant to be small. It's got 20 sheets of paper, 20 pages. Okay, so that's easy. Now, common page editions. This is the same. These pages will reflect throughout your document the common page elements. These, these are design elements that exist on every page. So I can simply create them here in our master page and remove them if a page doesn't have them, like the cover page. And you don't have to actually remove them. You can just hide them or untick them. Firstly, accent lines. These are each a straight line curve drawn 30 millimeters down and the width of the page from margin to margin. Not the full width, just the margin width. You can see them there if you look carefully. And they're both curves. The next layer contains the page number elements and the book title. Now look on the right hand side there, you'll see one, two, three, four layers. They contain the name and a couple of text frames for um, the page numbers. And the entire frame is 14 millimeters from the top edge. And you can set those distances in your transform studio just down the bottom of the layers panel. Very easy to use. And you're probably familiar with that by now. Page numbering of layers and groups. Now these are a number of groups with page numbers in it. And guess what? Each layer is given the name of what's in the layer. Makes them really easy to find. This layer group contains the page number, a dividing line, a little vertical line there between 38 and photography portfolio, and the book name on the left, the verso page, and page numbers on the right and left page, recto verso. The numbers are aligned right in the left page or verso page and aligned left in the recto page. Each layer is named appropriately and all of these elements are placed in their own group. Now you can see the group there. If you look on the right hand side at the top, you see the little down arrow that says page number. It's a group. So I've just named it as it is here, page number. Why change it? It's very nice. Tells you exactly what you're looking at. Now, column guides. You can have these or not, but I find them very useful. You can see in the pages that there are multiple columns in a light grey colour. And you can set them up here like this. The help file is displayed as in the guide manager to set them up. So you use the guide manager to set up your column guides. And you can see the big red arrow pointing across there and also the big red arrow pointing to the help file, which I've put up to kind of show you in the text of how you set them up. Very easy. There's three columns there, one row, and the gutter is 4.2 millimetres between the columns. They fit nicely in there. And the colour's grey. I like grey. It makes them stand out. So now our master page looks like this. There's only one layer for this page, grouped under page number. The others showing here are from the following pages. So don't worry too much about those at the moment. Now, text layers. Group your descriptive text elements in their own layers. We're onto page one now, or the cover page. We're no longer in the master page. You don't want this in your master page. It'll appear on every page if you do. You only want it in your pages that you're going to modify. Because naturally, they will not be the same on every page, nor will the images, so they won't belong in your master template. So, now you can see the text and the background black rectangle beneath it, each set in their own named layer group. See under swatches colour, there's a rectangle, and the rectangle is highlight, and that rectangle is pitch black. And above that, so you can see it, is a text layer. There's a small curve there, which is that underline under portfolio, photography portfolio, and a little underline and some text, and so on. Down the bottom, you've got the icon and the name Harry McGovern, and there's the picture in its picture frame of the girl with the long hair. Each in their own named layer, text, color, and picture frames. Now, there's more layers, each page, and this is the cover page, have their own layers. This is actually the second 
table of contents page. Groups of elements that make up each set. Now if you look carefully at the top left hand corner there you'll see it says page 2 and on the right hand side page 3 because the cover page is page 1. Now you can control that with page numbering sections or you can just cover up where it says page 1 on the first page. Not too complex, an individual for each page and here the back black background is selected. You can see that black background goes right across both sides there. Note that all images stretch out to the edge of the bleed. Don't try and keep them inside the bleed. Your images have to go right to the very edge of your document, out to the bleed. That's that red border all the way around. So that when the document is trimmed, if it's printed to trim, or it's published as a PDF, the bleed edge is taken into consideration and it's trimmed off. So obviously you don't put important information out in that 5mm bleed, but that's to ensure that you don't end up with white margins all around your document. Now the picture frames that are sewn, shown are actually where you place your own images. This is a table of contents, so every section has an image representing it. And you could put URL, URL links in this if you wanted to. A little bit tongue-tied there. URL is a hard word to say. Remember, this is a template. So it won't have the same images nor text in it each time. So you can even move the picture frames around to suit. And you can see they're all high, in highlight there and they're outlined in red because of that in the table of contents. Image place markers. You can set the picture frames to any colour or none, the default. I like the grey, it makes them very clear. So don't be confused by that. They're not images. They're actually your standard picture frames, but the fill is set to grey. Now that allows you to see very quickly and very clearly where your images belong on the page. And that's very easy to fix. You can place or replace the image of your choice into the picture frame as normal. And you can see where I've done this here. Because this is a pre-made template, you should check that the picture frame properties is set to none. This is fairly important. Check that the picture frame properties, and you can see it up the top of the page there, you've got picture frame, replace image and properties. Make sure it's set to either none or that it's set the scale to fill, probably the best one, and that the anchor is sent to the centre point. Now the white square you can see there is top left, that's the default. But if you click the centre point, it will enlarge it slightly and that means it's in effect. The white dot won't move, but the little square will enlarge slightly. It's, it's very tricky that piece and I'm not too sure that it may not be a little bug in Affinity Publisher. But that's all right. We know it's there and you can work on it. Work around it. Failure to do this, if you're dragging an image into those picture frames, it will result in the image being initially placed way off of the canvas, top left hand side somewhere, 20 feet away, up in the corner of your room. And you'll have to try and find it by zooming out of your document reducing the whole thing on your screen to a minuscule size and there up in the top left hand side you'll see a little frame where your picture is and you've got to drag it down to the image and mess around with it or throw it away altogether because then you'll go back you'll highlight the rectangle of the picture frame as you can see there it's in red then go up there set scale to max fit I put in that one and click on the little dot to centre center the anchor point. You probably don't need both, but I did both just to make sure. I got sick of chasing these images all around the screen. Okay, now once you've done that, place your image by either replace image or place image, and it will slot neatly into your picture frame, just like you can see there. And there it is. Place your image. That's basically it. So you can... Set up your picture frames across all of your pages where you want them. You don't have to keep this document exactly the same as it is, of course. 
you don't want all of your books looking all the same. But if you're doing one photo portfolio, this is all you want. I won't go through the entire 40 pages of how this is set up because they're all virtually the same, just different positions and different text. The Affinity Publisher template is available on my download site and it's combined, all combined, there's four zip files, two A4 and two US letter. One's a template and one's a document you can see here. The A4 portfolio for Affinity Publisher and the US letter portfolio for Affinity Publisher. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. As I say, I hope you find it useful. It certainly is here. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it. Thanks guys. Enjoy.